Good day, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Gareth Newham. I head the Justice Violence Prevention Program at the Institute for Security here in Pretoria. And today I'm going to talk to you about a campaign that the ISS has launched with Corruption Watch that sees fixing the public safety crisis in South Africa requiring a new start with police leadership and the leadership of the Hawks. South Africa has seen a dramatic increase in murder and armed robberies and corruption in recent years. This means that we are all at greater risk of violent crime and that increasing amounts of funding that should be going to creating jobs, improving services and developing our country are being stolen from the public. We, need, we know this because of the crime statistics which have been uh, showing us that for the last five years murder rate has increased by almost 20, or the number of murders has increased by 20 percent. So currently there are around 50 murders taking place every day in South Africa on average. This is really, really alarming because between 1994 and 2012 the murder rate actually decreased by 55 percent which meant that for most of the period of democracy in South Africa we've all been getting safer each year. However, Suddenly in 2011-2012 we see this shift upwards and last year there were 3, 000, almost 3,200 more murders than was the case five years ago. In addition, we see a situation in which aggravated robbery, in other words armed attacks on people in the streets while working to walk, uh, walking to work or going to the shops, evasions of people's homes, business places and hijackings have also increased dramatically by almost 32% in the last five years. That means that last year there were almost 32,000 more armed attacks across South Africa than was the case five years ago. This is a particular crime which the police, when they're using the resources effectively, can really do well to reduce. In South Africa, for example, between 2009 and 2011, the police in Gauteng under the command of dedicated police professionals, were able to reduce the number of hijackings in Gauteng by 32%, the number of home invasions by 19%, and business robberies by around 20%. So in two years, a team of less than 500 dedicated professional police officials were able to substantially improve public safety in Gauteng. Many people think the reason why we have a public safety crisis is because of police resources. In fact, that's not really the case. But before I get to that, I just want to also highlight that corruption, people's perceptions of corruption is that it's getting worse, and not only perception. So the Victims of Crime survey last year showed that 77% of all households in a 30,000 household survey sample think that corruption has gotten much worse in the last three years. And this is not just a perception. We're now getting increased details about how state capture has resulted in billions of rands being stolen from the taxpayer and from state-owned enterprises. But this can be stopped, and as I said before, it is not a result of inadequate policing resources. This slide below you shows that over the last few years, since 2011-2012, the budget of the police has actually increased by 50%, so that in the current financial year, the South African Police Service has a budget of 87 billion rand. Moreover, the number of police officials have, has increased dramatically between 2003 and 2012, 2013. There are almost 70,000 more people in the South African Police Service today than there was uh, in 2002. So there are more people, there are more resources, and we have very dedicated professional men and women in the South African Police Service at all levels. We have some of the most experienced police officers in the world given the challenges that they face and our jails are full of people. So it is not necessary to, uh, uh, the question is to rise is why, given that we have some extremely good senior managers, operational commanders, ordinary policemen and women and they have the resources available and have in the past shown their ability to improve public safety, why do we see this dramatic change? The question can be answered by looking at the police leadership. The National Development Plan that was adopted by the Cabinet in 2012 and by the African National Congress in 2012 
sees the fundamental problem of, of, of policing and community safety in South Africa as a crisis of top management. And why is this the case? Most people are surprised to find out that in fact, whereas there are 18 criteria that have to be met before you are admitted as a constable in the South African Police Service, there are only three criteria you need, need to be admitted as the National Commissioner. Those criteria are that you have to be a South African born citizen over the age of 18 and are not in possession of a criminal record. The reason why this exists is because the power to appoint the National Commissioner is completely contained by the President of South Africa. So the President of South Africa can choose any man or woman who meet those criteria and appoint them as the National Commissioner of Police. And if we look at what is, how this power has been exercised over the years, we'll suddenly start seeing that the, unfortunately this power has not been used in the interest of the public. Here we see that first national, uh, the first National Commissioner appointed in 2000, Jackie Selebi, by Tabo Mbeki, eventually, by 2010, was convicted and sentenced to 15 years imprisonment for corruption. After him, we had a new president, Jacob Zuma, who, was appointed, who, who ascended to power in 2009, and he had the perfect opportunity to demonstrate that he wouldn't, like Mbeki, appoint somebody perceived mainly to be loyal to him, but ultimately was corrupt, but appoint one of the many highly experienced police officials to lead the South African Police Service forward. But instead, he appointed a provincial politician, MEC for Community Safety at the time, Beke Tsele. Beke Tsele, a very bold and flamboyant individual, was supported by many police officers for his tough talking and his grand speeches. But ultimately, two years later, after a public protector report found that he was involved in a massive amount of maladministration involving 1.7 billion rand in a police leasing deal, he was eventually subject to a board of inquiry by Justice Jake Malloy and recommended that he be fired, which indeed he was. Again, in 2012, Jacob Zuma could have demonstrated that he had learned the lesson of appointing somebody who did not know how to police, that did not have any experience in policing, and there were questions about integrity. But instead of this, he appointed an unknown person with a social work background, Ria Piecha. Uh, whose experience in management had been pedestrian at best, in many, according to many sources. So suddenly, in June of 2012, South Africa woke up to the news that our new National Commissioner did not have a single day's experience of policing in her life. It wasn't long before that lack of ex experience showed uh, the damage that this can do. When South Africa experienced its, its largest first or its worst post-apartheid police massacre at Marikana where 112 striking mine workers were unnecessarily shot and 34 of them died. This was despite experienced commanders stating that if they went ahead with a poorly planned operation that there would be bloodshed going against all international accepted principles of policing in a democracy and South Africa's own law, Ria Piecha and her senior commanders went ahead anyway and that resulted in unnecessary deaths and injury to large numbers of people. She was then subject to a board of inquiry, the Marikana Commission of Inquiry led by Justice Farlam, which found that she lacked integrity because she was not forthcoming with the commission and she was incompetent. This resulted in her being suspended in October 2015 and the second board of inquiry looking into fitness of office finding that she indeed was not competent to possess or, or to, to hold the position of, of, of a National Commission of the South African Police Service and indeed recommended that she be fired. Her good friend, the President Jacob Zuma, rather than firing her, allowed her contract to run out in June this year, so she retains the title of full general and her full benefits and pension uh, that we as taxpayers have to pay her out. Currently we are funding her legal approach attempts to try and review both the findings of the Marikana Commission and the, far, and the Board of Inquiry into her action, uh, which most lawyers who've looked at the evidence suggest is highly unlikely to be successful. We also saw that Jacob Zuma's uh, ascendancy to presidency resulted in the crime intelligence uh, unit coming under incredible pressure with her appointment of Richard Mdluli. He eventually is, or currently is facing two separate prosecutions, one for violent crime and the other for a large amount of corruption that he allegedly committed while he was heading that unit. The evidence against him is overwhelming and was used in a board of inquiry, internal disciplinary inquiry by the South African Police Service to fire his second in command, Sorry Lazarus. In that inquiry, the advocate who was chairing it asked, where is Richard Mbouli since 
all the reasons I'm firing this man pertain to Richard Mdouli, but rather Richard Mdouli continues to this day to be the technical head of the South African Police Intelligence Unit and he full, receives his full salary and all perks and benefits with that and there are allegations that he continues to meddle in intelligence and rogue intelligence operations. We've seen again that the Scorpions were shut down, a highly successful unit that was able to investigate and prosecute corruption at the highest levels and replaced with the Hawks, which was far less independent. And when Anwar Dramat allegedly started investigating the president and those close to him, he was forced out with a payment. And a man who had already been found by two separate judges in two separate court, high court rulings to a man of dishonor and dishonesty and who lacked integrity was subsequently appointed to head the Hawks. And a court case has subsequently seen that appointment is rational and he's been removed. So we have a situation in which people are at the senior levels are being appointed to our crime fighting agencies who are not fit their rational appointments but what is the impact on the detectives and the, and the police officers on the ground well for example if you look at the detectives in the last five years the slide that you see before you shows the ability of the detectives to get on top of identifying those criminals involved in murders and armed robberies and other form of uh, organized violence. Of course there are structural issues to do with oversight, with grass level command and control, with having enough resources at a detective level, but those things can only be fixed with honest and dedicated top management. Without that you can see that the impact on the performance of the organization overall has declined substantially with the mer with overall violent crime detection rate dropping from 60, almost 61% 60 in 2011 12 to last year 37% and a reduction uh, in the murder detection rate so that only 25% of murder cases are actually solved by the police. Three out of four murder cases go unsolved and, and even worse less than one in five armed robbery cases go unsolved. So of course if you're a criminal involved in murder and armed robbery the chances of being arrested and brought to justice are highly unlikely and that means other people start doing these crimes and this is the reason why we're seeing dramatic increases in murder and armed robbery. When it comes to visible policing, men and women on the ground who are on the for front, uh, front ground, uh, lines of crime are also not getting the, 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 the focus they need, the support they need, the leadership they need, and this slide shows how visible policing has also substantially declined in the last five years. So who benefits when the police are not able to get on top of corruption, violent crime? Well, people who might be involved in those kinds of crimes are the ones who benefit. And of course, South, Africa's no, South Africans are now much more aware of how uh, uh, as much as 40 billion rand has been stolen from state-owned enterprises and the taxpayer over recent years in relation to the alleged activities of the Guptas, who are very close friends of our president and his family. So the president who appoints the head of the Hawks, whose job it is to fight corruption, the head of the police, whose job it is to fight violent crime and corruption, has no interest in ensuring that the best man or woman is appointed, if it is indeed true he's closely linked to, high, to grand corruption and state capture. And this shows you the Hawks performance trend, the ability of the Hawks to arrest and ensure the conviction of people involved in organized crime and corruption has plummeted. Okay, so we have decided with Corruption Watch that it's important that South Africans and the, and the broader community know that there's indeed a clear set of recommendations for appointing a police commissioner who, and a head of the Hawks who could turn the situation around. International research shows that to ensure that you get the most out of your police leadership, the person appointed to the post must be ethical, must be seen as a good role model. They cannot be breaking the law, acting illegally, not knowing the rules, and expect everybody else in the 156, of the 156,000 armed officers in South Africa to follow their rule different, lead differently. They will do what the leadership does. They must be good communicators both internally and externally, critical and creative thinkers. They must be decision makers who make decisions on evidence and includes those around them into making the best decision possible for the best possible policing outcome and of course trustworthy and legitimate. So the, clearly this has not been the criteria that the President has used in appointing the head of the Hawks nor the head of the South African Police Service Commission, uh, the National Commissioner. So what we're saying is that the National Development Plan recommendations, that a dedicated panel of experts is established to open up a transparent merit-based recruitment process. They must come up with a clear, clear criteria that say these are the minimum standards and characteristics we expect from our National Commissioner and the head of the Hawks. They must then open up 
the process to whoever thinks they could meet those criteria so that the best men and women both in the Hawks, outside the police, inside the police can apply and then they interview them in public so that every police officer and every member of the public knows what attributes and characteristics they're going to bring to the post. They can then bring a sh uh, develop a shortlist of between three and five possible candidates who meet the minimum criteria and present that to the Minister of Police for appointment of the Hawks and that to the President to exercise his constitutional powers to appoint the National Commission of Police. That is the minimum first step that we need before we start seeing that the resources, the expertise, the willingness of many men and women in the Hawks and the police to, ability to, to fight crime is effectively utilized to turn around this crisis of crime and corruption we're facing in South Africa at the moment. So we hope you join our campaign. We hope that you write to the members of parliament, we hope you write to the president and ask those people, including the heads of the ANC, Greta Matasha for example, implement your own policies, the policies that you promised South Africa you would implement in the National Development Plan, in the White Paper on Policing. Implement those policies so that we get the best possible leadership in the police, so that our, ourselves, our friends, our families and our, and our neighbours are all safer in the future. We do not need to follow the same well-worn uh, path to failure that has been the case of appointing the heads of the Hawks and the police going forward. So please, fill in our survey, follow us on Twitter, follow us on Facebook, and be part of a campaign that will ultimately lead to better policing and improved public safety for all of us.